batch number four, I'm gonna go back to just vanilla and I'm gonna put flour, plain flour in there. And I'll do two teaspoons of oil and two teaspoons of flour. That's where we're at at the moment. This time I am gonna put sugar in. I'm gonna put two teaspoons. I'm putting this back on the heat because it's still very soft. Although when I press into it, it is holding that shape quite nicely. Last minute change, I'm gonna make coffee flavor. Got instant coffee granules here. Crush that up into a powder. Maybe two thirds of a teaspoon of powder. Reminds me of a Dutch coffee candy. Mm. Last batch, I'm going to try a salted muscovado flavor, muscovado sugar. This batch is getting oats as the binder. So I just put some oats into the coffee grinder and then sieved it so I could get a really fine powder. And again, two teaspoons. You know what, actually I'm gonna do three. Here's where we're at with the oat mixture. Potato time. This has got a couple of strips that were welded onto the side, but because I'm going in with dark muscovado sugar, I don't actually mind that kind of toasted flavor. Two teaspoons of dark muscovado sugar. I'm doing an eighth of a teaspoon to start. I can always put a bit more in. Another eighth of a teaspoon of salt, so a quarter altogether. I don't know why this one's so much hotter than the others, <laughs> but it is. <laughs> the fudge has been resting for about an hour, the nice and cool to the touch. So it's the exciting part. Well, for me, it's the exciting part anyway. I'll taste them all and at the end, I'll show you how to cover the chocolate one in melted chocolate. As I've cut, I can see that it's leaving a residue on the blade. So I'm gonna clean that off as I go, just to keep the cuts as neat as possible. Vanilla, it is much softer than I wanted. Mmm, <laughs> but I don't care because it's delicious. To say there's no sugar in that one, because I forgot it, <laughs> it's deliciously sweet. Uh, and that's just from the sweet potato. So if you are trying to reduce the amount of refined sugars that you're eating, this could be a great option for you. Chocolate. Tootsie Rolls. That's what it reminds me of. It's a cross between chocolate brownies and Tootsie Rolls. Maple pecan. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> the balance is really good. And it tastes almost buttery, despite there being zero butter in there. Number four is the coffee flavor. This is the one made with plain flour. The other three so far were with glutinous rice flour. The coffee in there is strong enough that it tastes more like an espresso than a coffee sweet or a coffee flavor. It has a slightly bitter edge to it, but a really pleasant way that balances the sweetness very nicely. Last but not least is the salted dark muscovado sugar. And this is the one made with oat flour. The oat one is kind of the only one that's clinging to my back teeth and the roof of my mouth. Not unpleasantly, in a very nice way, much like fudge or caramel. A genius! Whoa! I'm gonna melt the chocolate using a bain marie. So it's a pan of hot water, glass bowl. You want enough water so that it touches the bottom of the bowl. The reason I'm using the bain marie is that chocolate can be a bit temperamental. So this is a much gentler heat, much easier to control. And I've got a 100 gram bar of chocolate here. So break it up. We have a visitor. Hello, Cleo. In terms of storing the fudge, I'm gonna keep it in the freezer just to maximize its life, really. And then I'll take it out, you know, five minutes before I want it, just let it thaw a tiny bit. But I think freezing it is actually gonna make it harder and a bit chewier. Win. I have the rack sitting on a piece of cling film. So as I've dipped it in the chocolate, I'll put them on here and then the rum off will gather on the sheet. And then once it's set, I can just put that in a bag and use it the next time I do something chocolatey. If you want the chocolates to be shiny, you're gonna to have to temper the chocolate, which involves spreading it on the worktop and moving it around to bring the temperature down. Suffice it to say, I'm not doing that. Uh, but yeah, you know, if you're making a gift or something like that, feel free to Google it. Dunking in. <laughs> it's a bit fragile. Pop it on the tray. 
and then just use a stick to cover up any imperfections. An idea to stir it every now and then, just to keep the temperature even inside there. If the chocolate starts getting really gloopy, just put the heat back on, warm it through slightly. So there we have it, sweet potato fudge. It is possible. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this, but the chocolate's dripping through, but then it's not dripping down enough. I guess there's not enough space. I've got stalled tights of chocolate and it's not ideal. <laughs> Hopefully by lifting it up, it's gonna give the chocolate more distance to fall. Give it a smack, see if that helps. Yes, it does. I mean, it's better than it was at least. What I wanted to do isn't gonna work at all because the chocolate is kind of uh, entombed <laughs> the bars against the fudge and I won't be able to get the pieces off once they're dry, once it's hardened. If you've enjoyed watching my first foray into uh, vegetable-based confectionery, make sure you hit subscribe, tap the bell icon, and that way you'll never miss a single one. I wonder what I could do with carrots. Hmm.